morning. You may remember a couple of weeks ago, we met a chap called Mark. He um, showed us some of the systems he had in his house. He's got a 2018 Nissan Leaf. Uh, he's got solar, Tesla Powerwall, Zappi Charger. And um, we had a really interesting day with him and learned an awful lot of, well, I certainly learned an awful lot of new things. Uh, but apparently so did you guys. You put so many comments uh, below the video about wanting to know more about his system and about how it worked that um, I've arranged with him to come back and meet him again today. So we're heading over to his house now to go and have a little look around. Uh, but I'm running a bit early, so I'm gonna stop and get a coffee and um, I'll see you there. Mark, thank you ever so much for having us back to your house. No, no problem. Uh, after last time, uh, I was explaining before that so many people were interested in the, the setup you've got here in your house. Uh, the solar panels, the power wall, the zappy charger, everything that goes with it, it generated more interest, I think, than I've ever had in any video ever before. And um, people just want to know more and more about it. Obviously, I couldn't provide all those answers, no. so um, you've been kind enough to let us come back today. We're gonna to have a really good look around and really explore your system and try and really find out why you've chosen the, the pieces of equipment you've chosen yeah. and how they all work together, yeah. if indeed they all work together seamlessly. So what I thought we'd do, uh, let's start with the outside. We'll start with the top and we'll look at the solar panels yeah. and then we'll work our way through. So how did you come about the design that you chose and how it ended up on the roof the way it has? Well, I think it's, it's, for, for, for me, I think most men would agree, you know, you've got to get permission from management. Absolutely. You know, <laughs> if you're going to do these things, that's that's where it comes from. And uh, I managed to persuade my, my good lady that we could have some solar panels. Yeah. And I, I said, no, I have researched it and they, we can buy these, they're called in-roof panels. Mm -hmm. So they take the tiles away and they replace the tiles with the with the solar panels. Yeah. And when she saw a picture of that, she said she was happy. She liked those. And that allowed me then to proceed. <laughs> <laughs> but they do look, in, in fairness, we've had a lot of comments from the neighbours saying how nice they look compared with what we normally consider to be a solar panel. Because yeah. they don't stick out. So we came upon this, they were recommended to us, this one particular brand, and they are 320 watts each panel mm -hmm. and I've got nine of them that creates a, a peak power of 2.88 kilowatts right so in theory if the temperature is exactly right and the sun is at a the right point yeah. in the sky they could generate 2.88 kilowatts per hour they I, I don't think there's ever any a system that ever does so a four no. kilowatt system doesn't ever generate of not. four kilowatts an hour our, our 2.88 kilowatts will actually create two and a half thousand kilowatts right in our house to our house throughout the whole of the year some most of that in the summer yeah obviously and less in the winter um now having had it going for um a few weeks <laughs> i should didn't need didn't need to spend as much as i did no and this is interesting we were talking about this before so the the amount of power that your um solar generates yeah Actually, the way we were discussing it is, it, it is more than what you would need, and you've worked out from a, a probably a four-person family, uh, yeah. looking at peak times. Actually, yeah. what what do you think would be required? Well, I, I think I think um, you, the the peak of a four-person family is is somewhere between six and eight kilowatts, uh, somewhere in the region of between four p.m. and eight p.m. Right. Well, that would be variable depending on what time people finish work course, and what time yeah. they put their ovens on and their dishwashers so general and their washing machines. Yes. Yeah. So if you if you had a solar array that would generate um, seven kilowatts nominally, yeah. So you might want to generate. You might have one that generates more in in the summer and less, but yeah. less in the winter, but somewhere around about seven kilowatts um, in a whole day. And mine, mine yesterday generated 15 kilowatts. It, it, it was a, a good day. Okay. Today's slightly, slightly less, okay. less, less good. But so half of what I've got 
will clearly would have generated me um, seven and a half Sufficient. kilowatts yesterday. So a little bit more than half, mm. um, perhaps two two kilowatt array. Yeah, would would probably generate for 60, 70 percent of the year sufficient power sufficient. for you to use uh, at that peak period. The problem is, because it doesn't generate it at the peak period, no. 90% of my solar system I don't use. So that at, would at the time it's that. being generated. So that goes into my batteries currently. Which is where you can but benefit from Other it. people will be, would have been giving them away to yeah. the grid. Because you don't use the power in the middle of the day when you get the bulk of the um, solar. No. Solar in itself is not the solution no. for everybody. Um, solar with a battery is most definitely a solution. But you don't need to have two whopping great big batteries like I've got. <laughs> no. So, so okay, let's move on to the batteries then. So, uh, you have got two Tesla Powerwalls. Yeah, two Tesla uh, Powerwall 2s. Yeah. Generation 2. What size are they each? So they, they, they store 14 and a half kilowatts each, but we can only use 13 and a half of them. Yeah. So we've got 27 kilowatt um, able to be stored in the batteries and able to be discharged from the batteries to any activity that we plug in in the home or the cars. Yeah. So before we kind of go into uh, what the Powerwall offers, why did you choose a power wall over some of the other batteries that are available? Well, because I calculated uh, the whole thing based on what I had purchased energy for on day by day by basis last year. And the very maximum I used was 31 kilowatts during the highest peak right. of the winter. So I thought, well, if I've got 27 kilowatts, I'm covering nearly 99% of my daily usage. Yeah. I'll always we'll never have, be wanting. I'll never, no, I'll never want power from the um, from the grid. But uh, I did, I did presume that the, that the solar would not fill them, right? And that I would need to pull energy from the grid overnight, yeah, to to balance the uh, the load. So that uh, that was my original theory that I would use the energy from the nighttime low low rate nighttime, fill the batteries up with that, and then use that to discharge throughout yeah. the day when we use their energy. And I was going to use the solar to go in the cars, which is why I got the Zappy. Um, but in fact, uh, we had this. We had um, the the Tesla provided us with the walls without the ability to take power from the overnight grid. Oh, okay. Because their default standard at the moment is that when they sell the walls, they are only set to accept energy from the solar system. Right. Uh, I, I spoke to them and immediately they said, yes, we do, we do have the, um, the upgraded firmware and we, you, will, you will receive it because you've requested it. And that gave me the, the option to say to the walls there was a time during the during the day and night that I would like them to receive energy and they will decide whether they need that energy depending on how much charge they've got. So you can really control as and when they hunt for demand of energy. So yeah. it will always draw from the solar. Yes. But the rest of it you can really tell it. You, you can control you it or it. you can you can uh, allow it to control itself. Right. It has an intelligent system. It predicts the weather. So it predicts how much solar it's going to take tomorrow. So it, it won't fill up to a certain degree so yeah. that it doesn't overfill itself. And if you didn't want to control it, if you weren't like me, a geek, then you could just say, oh, I'll put it in and let it, let it do itself. Yeah. And it will literally work out what your usage pattern is and it will, it will pull from the grid at the times that you set. To, to buy the solar and one Tesla power wall, is, is too much for, for a family of four who are working. So even that would be overkill. Four. See, this is really yeah. interesting because you do, when you, when certainly I've been researching it, and back to my family, we're two plus two. Um, that to me, when I look at half of what you've got solar wise and one power wall, I, I've researched thought that's not enough, I need more. No, so well, it's well interesting I think that, I think that would be too experience. much. Right. If, if, I was, if I was recommending yeah. a solution for people for minimum spend, Maximum um, minimum time for payback. Yeah, I would suggest just go out and buy one smallish seven to eight kilowatt battery. Mm -hmm. Nothing else. No nothing solar. Else. Nothing because that will give you the maximum um, advantage for the minimum spend. Yeah, and I think your payback period will be four to five years. And then drop that onto an economy seven tariff exactly. and charge. You it need the economy high. seven yeah. because obviously you need the lower rate. Otherwise, there's no point. Now, obviously, if you want to reduce that 
that bill, like I'm saying, you can save maybe 35, 40% from your yeah. bill. But if you wanted to go further, say, no, I really would like to have an 80 to 90% yeah. reduction. Then, yes, a, a solar, a small solar array, think maybe two kilowatt peak um, solar array, which would be, what would that be? Um, six, six panels, something, something like that. Like, yeah. Six of the three, the three twenties. Um, attached to that little battery. Yeah. Um, grab as much of the solar energy into those batteries yeah. so you don't then pay the 7p overnight you might need to just top up you know or, you, again, or other times you might not so um it would be minimum spend and then i, I would think that you'd have 90 percent of your energy would be completely free okay so that's our solar and power walls yes but because you've also got the electric cars now i know you've got a, a seven kilowatt a polar yeah. uh, charger six, anyway 6.6 yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah. um that works as any other car charging um but when I put the solar in, I, I thought I will, I'll use the solar. Yeah. Um, and I went to Zappy and I was amazed how good the product is. I have to say there is, it's really configurable. And so if I wanted just to charge on solar, if, if that was what I'd made my decision and I knew it was going to be a dull day, you can actually uh, modify um, some settings, some parameters inside it so that it has to maintain this 1.4 kilowatt charge because the legislation is that the minimum charge that any electric car will take has to be 1.4 kilowatt. Yeah. The response when I telephoned them just to ask a simple question, they are so polite and immediately so knowledgeable. Mm -hmm. Very, very happy with that company. And this this is replaced my old pod point. Right. So previously I had a pod point which I paid the same amount of money as I paid for this, and all I could do is plug unplug that plug from the wall and plug mm -hmm. it back in again. That's all it that's all. Yeah. Now I've got all this ability. If I just I mean, if I didn't have the Tesla app, just to be informed how much the solar panels are generating, yeah. how much the house of, of that the house is using, how much it's pulling from the grid, the front panel, how yeah. much it's pu pushing into the, um, the car. It's a fantastic piece of uh, information, and they are working on an app that will provide that information to an app on your phone, so it won't even okay. have to come out here and look, which is fantastic. So clever, yeah. so, so clever. And um, you show me the three different modes. Yeah. So, there's fast, which is the 6.6 .6 6 kilowatt 6, charger, yeah, yeah. draws from the grid yes. and just charges your car like any other charger. Yes. Uh, the next one is Eco, yes. which is Eco uh, with a little leaf I, on I it. I call it Eco 1. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that does... That's 1.4 um, kilowatts f full out. Mm -hmm. So if you're creating 1.4 from your solars, it won't, it won't use any from the grid. Yep. If you're not creating, it will pull as much as it needs from the grid to maintain a constant 1.4 kilowatt charge into your car, so trickle charging. Yeah. So again, as I said earlier, if you've got a two, 2018 Nissan Leaf 40, 40 kilowatt, don't use it because you won't get the mileage. This is what but we're talking about, yeah. If you've got any, any other make, you, it might well, and certainly my old Nissan, it worked really, really well no with. Yeah. Um, I used to leave that on, on one of either that or the next eco mode and um, yeah, I got the same mileage. Yeah, okay. And then the final mode on it is the e Eco, Eco Plus. Two, as I two call leaves. it. Yeah, <laughs> two leafs, yeah. And what that does is that um, that's configurable, um, but it, it essentially will gives you the option to try and be completely self-powered. Yeah. So we can't charge beneath 1.4. That's not, that's not Zappi's fault. That is a legal requirement. Mm -hmm. And that sometimes your solar panels are not creating that 1.4. Yeah. So at that point, if you had decided to set that to 100% self-powered, it would pause the um, pause the charging. Mm -hmm. 
and then we recommence the minute the clouds have gone and yeah. your solar array is creating 1.4. Yeah. It won't go above 1.4. It won't, if your solar array, I think, charges at 2. You know, yeah. won't, I don't think it goes above it. No. But I, I never got it to go above it. But it will, co- it will charge your car in the most environmentally friendly manner. And um, you're saying they all come tethered? Yes. So you have to decide what type you need type, on the end of Type 1, it. type 2, and they come tethered in 5 or 8 metres long. Right, Mark, thank you ever so much again for today. I no appreciate um, we've been quite intrusive around your house yeah, and no, you've no, no. shown me all sorts. And I mean, it's helped me, but hopefully people that are watching, well, we right. hopefully answered the questions that's that they wanted answering. Do, it? Yeah, um, so um, I guess any questions anyone's got, if they put them onto the comment section for me, I can always pass them on to yeah. you. If I can't answer them, I'm sure, well, clearly you'll be able to answer them. That's right. <laughs> you, um, you're, you're, Wealth of knowledge it amazes me every time I meet you. Um, so uh, thank you ever so much for that. I really no appreciate it again. And um, I'm sure there'll be many more of these yeah. videos of us together no, with um, to various it. bits and pieces going on. So thank you. Um, if you've enjoyed today's video, um, if, by, if you can like and share it. And if you're not doing so already, subscribe to the channel. And um, until next time, thanks ever so much. Take care.